One of the main barriers to being able to take advantage of modern portfolio theory techniques in day trading is the difference in stability of the portfolio. In a day trading context, the portfolio might change 20, 50 or maybe even more times in a single day. So how can this be handled? Stay tuned. DarwinX is a UK FCA regulated broker and asset manager on a mission to disrupt the financial trading, investing and asset management industries. If you're a talented trader looking to attract investor capital to your strategies, DarwinX is the fastest way for you to do this. We enable traders to raise third party investor capital and then charge success fees on high watermark profits. Additionally, DarwinX itself invests in its traders with our seed capital allocation program that allocates up to 90 million euros per year in successful trading strategies. So if all of that sounds interesting, learn more by clicking on the link here, or you can find further links in the description right below. Now back to today's tutorial. In this series, I'm looking at four adaptations that are necessary to be able to exploit modern portfolio theory techniques in swing and day trading. In this episode, I look at how to cater to the rapidly changing nature of portfolios when trading in much shorter timeframes. I covered this slide in more detail in the previous episode, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it now. But the essence of this is that the tools and the techniques around modern portfolio theory can be extremely advantageous. But I pose the question, can these be adapted to day and swing trading? And if you watched the last episode, you'll know that my view on this is that yes, they can. But there are a number of adaptations that are required and this episode is covering the second of those. So last time we looked at the expected return calculation and how that needs to be handled specifically in a day trading context compared to a longer term investment context. And so now I turn my attention to portfolio construction and specifically the rate of change of that portfolio if we are a day or swing trader. So let me explain the difference here. In a typical longer term portfolio approach, work will be undertaken to come up with an optimized portfolio. And when talking about the efficient frontier, that portfolio is often called the tangent portfolio. So let's say a fund manager has performed their role and come up with this particular portfolio with the weighting of each individual asset in that portfolio indicated by the percentage. And then under normal circumstances, it will be a period of time before anything's changed in that portfolio. But at some point, the portfolio manager will decide to re-optimize and rebalance the portfolio. And this might result in some of those holdings increasing in their weighting, some reducing and some staying the same. However, the portfolio manager might also decide to remove certain assets from the portfolio if he decides they're not beneficial to the overall risk versus return ratio, and they might be replaced by an alternative stock. And it's the job of that portfolio manager to ensure that the portfolio delivers the greatest return compared to the risk that it's subject to. So let's now turn our attention to what happens to a portfolio, let's say in a day trading context. And here on the left hand side, you can see an example of a point in time where this particular trader is trading currency pairs, they're trading stock CFDs, perhaps stock indices, and maybe some commodity CFDs as well. So we've got gold here. And there'll be a combination of both long and short trades in this instantaneous portfolio. But throughout the course of the day, there will of course be signals that initiate the closure of certain positions. There'll be new positions that open. So for example, this pound yen long trade, and then we might have another position closure and another, and then finally a new trade in let's say Amazon stock. But the point is, these are all happening within the course of a single day. 
Some day traders might not have quite so many trades. Others will have many more. And so the difference here is that there isn't that period of time where the portfolio stays constant, as there is in the longer term investment context. And so the result of this is that if we're going to use these portfolio techniques in swing and day trading, then it means there are many calculations that will need to be continually performed in order to ensure that the balance of that portfolio at any point in time is optimal. So let's look at the two main calculations that need to take place. The first is concerned with the opportunity for a new position. So the trader, either manually or as part of algorithmic trading, has come to the decision that there's an opportunity to buy a long position in pound yen. Now, let's assume that up until this point, the existing portfolio, so these five other positions, have already been optimized and so are providing that optimal level of return versus risk. So when this new position comes along, it's necessary to ascertain what the position size needs to be in order to be of maximum benefit to the existing portfolio. And this, of course, will take account of what the correlation of pound yen is with these other assets. It will take consideration of what the level of risk as measured by the standard deviation, the expected return of this new position, and so on. And so that calculation needs to be performed in the same way I've shown in previous episodes. And in this case, for example, let's say that the optimal position size comes out at being 0.11 lots. But there's a second time that this optimization needs to take place. And that is every time a position closes. So let's use the example of this euro dollar short position closing. Now, Whenever this happens, it's likely to disrupt the balance of the portfolio. And so just to give a very quick example here, because Euro dollar and Australian dollar USD, which is also in the portfolio, will tend to be fairly correlated because they share that USD component by holding one of these long, which was Australian dollar USD, and Euro dollar short, this would have hedged one against the other and resulted in lowering the risk of the overall portfolio. But if we're now going to close that euro dollar position, that hedging will be gone. And so at this point, we now need to perform a full portfolio optimization in order to ensure that the portfolio remains optimal. And that might result in all of these position sizes changing some might increase, some might decrease. And so hopefully you get the idea now that in order to incorporate these portfolio management techniques into a much shorter day trading context, it does require a continual optimization of that portfolio as new positions open and positions close. And clearly this is going to be very difficult to do for manual trading unless the frequency of trading is relatively low. But to incorporate these techniques, if a trader is making 20, 30, 40 trades per day, then the only way of doing that is in an automated fashion algorithmically. Okay, so we've now covered the first two adaptations that are required in order to use modern portfolio concepts within a shorter term time frame. Next time, we're going to move on to the third one here, which is focusing on calculation timeframes and also recalculation intervals of the key metrics used in these portfolio calculations. And then in episode 35, I'll turn my attention to what needs to be done in terms of monetary weightings compared to lot sizes and also look at certain conversions that need to take place based on the calculation currencies of different assets. And if you feel that you're getting value from these, then please do give me a like for the video. But now, until next time, trade safe.